There's an actual signet just hatched like minutes ago probably. And there's another shell that's just being pipped through right now. Just wow. minutes after emerging, a young trumpeter swan attracts an audience. The sight enthralls even seasoned biologists bent on studying the birds. That is a very fresh, fresh hatchling. That's awesome. That is very cool. The trumpeter swan story in Minnesota is equally amazing. The birds were expatriated, eliminated from the state in the 1880s. An ambitious reintroduction effort started in the 1980s. Trumpeter swan eggs and adults from native flocks in Alaska and Montana were flown in and released here. Expectations were modest. The results? Impressive. We initially thought we would be happy with 50 nesting pairs in the state. And some recent data from our waterfall research staff that have done some projections, uh, they figure that we have 3,600 swans in the flock and over 800 nesting pairs in the state. It, it's just very rewarding and it's just wonderful to see. So now, 20-some years into the project, researchers are gathering nesting information about our reintroduced trumpeter swans. This one's still staying on the nest. We think that there's still an egg out there, so. Graduate student Chris Sather and her assistant Eric Hildebrand located over two dozen trumpeter swan nests scattered across west central Minnesota. This one is north of Park Rapids, just off a main highway. Early in the season, they visit go. the nest to weigh, measure, and mark each egg. After roughly 34 days of incubation, <laughs> the eggs hatch and the researchers return, with all due respect. So a little hostile right now. Um, as you can see, she got off the nest here, but not really happy with us right now. The physical dimensions of an adult swan are sizable. They weigh between 25 and 30 pounds and stand up to five feet tall. That's kind of why we wanted to back off there, because she's a little more she's a little more used to maneuvering herself in the water than we are, and big wings. <laughs> if you see a nest at any time, it's best not to approach it because this is the time when the birds are most vulnerable. Anytime you see the bird actually getting up off the nest, probably means that you're a little too close and it would be best to back off. Originally, Chris found three eggs in this nest. Two cygnets are swimming nearby with the other adult, leaving one egg unaccounted for. It's common for them not all to hatch within one day or of each other, 24 to 48 hours. And then from that point, it even might take him another day or two to actually leave the nest. By her staying, standing guard on that nest here, it's a pretty good indicator that there is still an egg in there. But we just might have to leave her alone for now and come back another day. Well, this nest actually has, there are five eggs that she's incubating right now. Um, typical nest mound out there, I guess. She's been uh, luckily able to find quite a few nests, I think 25 last year and 27 this year that she's followed. Checking this one requires some extra effort. She's actually covering up the eggs right now. You can see her um, picking up some nest vegetation and laying over the eggs. It's not easy getting to all of these sites. <laughs> it involves quite a bit of creativity sometimes getting out to the nest and, and really gathering the the important information. There she slipped off the nest. This nest actually is just, their nest was right there on that floating patch. Oh, in the nest we have a cygnet. Look at this. That one just hatched today too. Oh my goodness. That's cool. This one obviously just hatched and from what we can see here that is, looks like egg number five. But yeah, so this one, egg number two is gonna hatch out today and also egg number one, three and four, not quite sure yet. So what I'm doing now here is called candling the eggs. If you hold it up to a light source, you can see into the egg and um, you can start to see like some forms of development. And then um, it start, the air cell starts to slope more as the egg gets older, gets further into incubation. And pretty soon you'll be able to see the actual, the chick, the cygnet, pipping up into the air cell to get air and get ready to start breaking out of the eggshell like this one is. 
Chris's first-hand observations and accurate field measurements create a baseline of information that can be compared from year to year. What I'd like to know is egg, egg three weighed this much, its egg dimensions were this, but it didn't hatch. And we're going to try and see if we can make correlations between the hatch success and egg sizes. So maybe eggs one, two, four, and five were larger eggs, bigger dimensions, you know, a little healthier egg. She also wants to know how Minnesota's trumpeter swans stack up against other flocks in the country. Are the trumpeter swans in Minnesota now, are they, are they having bigger clutches? Are they laying bigger eggs? Are they smaller eggs? Are we having better hat success? Her work gives the non-game wildlife program a good foundation to continue monitoring a viable swan population long into the future. We don't often get a chance to get quite that close and to see a chick that's just hatched you know, possibly minutes to uh, hours ago is just something that it, it makes you glad that we're on this earth to, to see these kinds of things.